Street Fighter and Bollywood, not things that most people would associate with each other. Well, unless we are talking about the 1995 box office disaster of an Indian movie that shares the Street Fighter name. But that's fairly unrelated. Instead, today we will discuss one of the weirdest versions of Street Fighter around, analysing the existence and lore behind a video game that was produced specifically to be sold on the Indian black market. Ladies and gentlemen, gaming doesn't get more Indian than this. So, without further ado... I am Lady Decade and this is the Illegal Street Fighter 2 Indian Edition. Let me introduce you to Bollywood 2003. What the fuck? Well, this version of Street Fighter 2 certainly differs from the one many of us grew up playing in arcades. But to fully understand why a monstrosity like this would exist in the first place, we of course first have to look to the past of Indian gaming. By this point, it is pretty much global knowledge that the Nintendo Entertainment System was a huge hit in the United States, as it was in its Famicom form factor in Japan too. In fact, 85% of global sales for the device were sold in just these two countries, with that other 15% achieved in Europe. Developing nation India, on the other hand, would be a different story, with there being economic policies in place that prevented foreign companies from participating in the Indian economic market. But Nintendo, of course, being Nintendo, would find a way to supply the country with one of the largest populations on Earth with gaming goodness. Nintendo would team with a local gentleman called Mahesh Toshnawal, an Indian man who had fallen in love with the Famicom on an earlier visit to Japan. Realising the money-making potential of a distribution deal was at stake, Toshinawa later managed to broker the deal and sell the NES under the localised branding as the Samurai. This was an excellent name to be fair, as not only did Indians like most of the world at the time associate Japanese electronics with quality, but they would instantly associate Samurais with the country too. So the Samurai would dominate, correct? Well, yes and no both simultaneously. There are reports out there that only between two and three hundred of these units were ever shifted, causing Nintendo to lose faith in the market incredibly quickly. This unfolding was witnessed by Rakesh Dugar, a local arcade distributor who would be appalled by the ludicrous price for which Samurai would try to sell the console, a price that was much more expensive than in the West, but instead within a developing nation. With the Famicom being cloned in Taiwan in 1989, Dugar would change his company name to the Japanese-sounding Mitashi, take advantage of lax copyright laws in India and begin cheekily selling Famiclones under the Samurai branding. To ensure the platform was a success, the bootleg Samurai would not only be sold at a much cheaper price point, but awareness was well spread through a great TV commercial campaign too. And if all that wasn't enough reason to want a samurai, Mitashi would have an 8-bit clone of Brian Lara Cricket made for the hardware, a game that would allow the public to indulge in playing the nation's most popular sport from the comfort of an armchair. You could say that Mitashi scored an inning with this one. That's a cricket reference. Of course, India was not the only country where Famiclones were selling fantastically, as this unofficial Nintendo hardware was hugely popular in emerging markets worldwide. With console gaming being more accessible than ever before, this meant if a smash hit like Street Fighter 2 was released, Taiwanese bootleggers such as Hummer Team spring to work and create 8-bit versions of games to access this huge grey market. On this channel in the past, we have already discussed various versions of this bootleg game 
game. But what is Bollywood 2003 about? Much like the 8-bit cricket game, it appears it was created specifically to appeal to Indians. According to the Lost Media Archives, the game was missing online for years, with internet users only having proof of its existence due to somebody filming a blurry monitor in 2003. The website describes it as a ROM hack of Kony's Street Fighter 2 Pro, but to be more specific, Bootleg Games.Phantom describes it as a modified version of Street Fighter 6 12 Peoples. As there are no substitute characters in the Bollywood game for either Zangief or Dal Sim. And yes, I know what you're thinking. No Dal Sim in a Bollywood 2003 makes me sad too. While we unfortunately cannot play as Dal Sim in this one, rather than moaning about who we can't play as, let's celebrate who we can play as, in perhaps the strangest version of Street Fighter ever. Like if we were talking about an official game, let's start off by covering Ryu, or at least his Bollywood equivalent according to this game. Taking the Ryu role, we have Shah Rukh Khan, not to be confused with Shaka Khan, the American singer whose career spans five decades. Sharuk Khan, also known by his initialism SRK, is a major Bollywood player. Often referred to as the Bard Shah of Bollywood and King Khan, he has been in over 90 movies and won 14 Filmfare Awards. It's not surprising that the bootleggers would place him in such a prominent role as, in terms of audience size and income, several media outlets have described him as one of the most successful film stars in the world, so it is no wonder that he has been able to master the Hadouken so easily. Ryu may be cool and all, but considering I have a majority male audience watching, you thirsty lot are probably more interested in learning about this game's answer to Chun-Li. In Chun-Li's place, we can play as the gorgeous Aishwarya Rai, an Indian actress who would find great success in starring in both Hindi and Tamil films alike. Gaining global recognition as the Miss World of 1994, Raya was able to catapult herself to becoming one of the most popular and influential celebrities India had to offer. Not long before this game's release, she would receive a considerable amount of critical praise for her role in the Tamil romance film Can Do Condane, Can Do Condane. For an extra fact, tying up both the fighters we've discussed so far, they co-starred alongside each other in period romantic drama Devdas in 2002, a movie which sees the character portrayed by Khan's family reject their marriage, leading him to descend into alcoholism. To be fair, not being able to marry Indian Chun-Li would make anybody an alcoholic. In Ken's place, we have Hiritik Roshan, a rather fittingly extremely wealthy actor, one of the highest paid in Bollywood in fact. This winner of six Filmfare Awards, including Best Actor, regularly finds himself in top 100 lists based on both income and popularity. But if we are talking about what went down in Bollywood 2003 specifically, that year would be the turning point of his career. Roshan would give one of his strongest performances ever in the now considered classic Koi Mil Gaia, a movie where he plays a developmentally disabled man who, using a computer, manages to be the first person ever to contact extraterrestrials. I hope you're taking note of all of this Indian pop culture trivia. Speaking of pop culture, let's talk about my personal favourite character in the game and stand-in for E Honda. With the big question being, how can he slap? The master of the hundred hand slap in Bollywood 2003 absolutely slaps as he is portrayed by the now meme legend Della Mendy. That's right, the same Della Mendy who stars in the YouTube video that got well over 200 million views, performing the Tun 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 song. While this Gangnam Style precursor solidified Mendy as an internet legend, he was already a massive name in India, with him creating his biggest hit ever as a challenge after his critics regularly accused this round and rotund turban wearer of only being successful due to putting hot women in all of his videos. 
functioning as the face of Coca-Cola in India in 1998 and credited for inventing a musical instrument and his very own genre of music called Rababi, I don't think you could ask for a better character to be put in here. Hell, put him in Smash Brothers, it wouldn't be his first official video game related affair as the Tunek Tunek Tun can be found in the world of Warcraft. And it's an easter egg in Medal of Honor Allied Assault, Mendy has more than made his mark. Moving on to electrify his fans in the blanket role, we have Amitabh Bachchan, a Bollywood legend who by this point has a career spanning over five decades, with him appearing in over 200 movies. Regarded as one of the most successful and influential people in Indian cinema history, the man who is often referred to as the Shahin Shah of Bollywood, star of the millennium and Big B is kind of a big deal. In fact, in 2001, he would receive the Actor of the Century Award for his contributions to world cinema, a shockingly excellent cherry on top of an electric career. Rounding off our roster, replacing Guile, we have Sanjay Dutt. And when I say Sanjay Dutt, I am referring to the Bollywood superstar, not the obscure wrestler from TNA's X Division past, like some of you geeks might be thinking. Dutt is the perfect casting for Indian Guile, as he has made a successful career primarily starring in action movies. With both parents being famous actors too, this family man first found success starring in the 1981 Rocky movie. It's not the same Rocky movie you're probably thinking of, but instead it's an Indian romantic action comedy. As for links to Bollywood 2003, this very year marks the beginning of the period of his most widespread acclaim, portraying the leader of the Mumbai underworld in the Mana Bai series. One final note on this character linking him to the military and guns. In 1993, he was convicted for possessing illegal weapons procured from others accused in the 1993 Bombay bombings. Absolutely mental. Or, as an Indian would say, what a hullabaloo. On the surface, this might look like the crudest possible bootleg hack that could be humanly conceived. At the very least, it seems that whoever produced this hack had their fingers on the pulse to some degree when trying to produce a fighting game that appealed to the Indian market. Sure, it's no bootleg Brian Lara Cricket, but it certainly has its weird charm. Anyway, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, then check out my video on the Ending Man Terminator, another bizarre bootleg system. Thanks, bye. <laughs>